What is going on guys? Joe here from Xbox Games and I've been playing a ton of that new of Call of Duty game but you know what? I'm still gonna get back to this stuff and this one goes out to my buddy Dan. Yeah, like I don't know what Nerf Rival is all about. Anyways, hopefully he watches this video. Today I got something a little new for you guys. If you guys remember, we picked up that FN10555 kit, of course, for the XV700 Nerf Rival here. And we've been meaning to put this thing on. We just haven't done it yet because we've been doing some of the other cool stuff like the giveaways and doing all that other stuff for the, like the Jet Sita. And those projects have been awesome, right? And to catch everybody up, yeah, the winner for number two giveaway, he decided on the blue rival, but then he was like, no, I want the red. So we went ahead, and he's probably gonna watch this, and I wanted to surprise him, but we went ahead and sent him both nerf rivals. I think he should get that uh, in two days or something like that from Amazon. So again, congratulations to you. We just decided to send you both because, hey, why not, right? You couldn't make up your mind. He went from the blue to the red, so we went ahead and sent you both. Anyways, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this kit on. Really, this kit is supposed to be almost a drop-in. One of the things I did notice about this kit is they did not give me the uh, butt plate for it. They just gave me the front, and I ordered the one with the butt plate, but when it comes in kind of this plastic bag here, I couldn't even really, it looked like it had it in there, but I couldn't tell. But essentially, this is gonna go kind of like that, right? right on the front. So it's really just a pump action where it's just gonna pump back, pump the arm. And I believe we do have the spring for this as well. So I might do the spring mod just to make this thing shoot harder because yeah, if I remember right, this thing shot about 95 to 100 FPS. And with the spring mod, I think it's gonna shoot about 120 to 130. You can't get too much with rival right because the, bolt, the, the rounds start kind of curving up in the air. So let's go ahead and break this thing down, put a new spring in here, put these parts on, get it all running check to see how fast it shoots, see how it looks with it on there, and we'll go from there. So let's switch up views. Here we go, guys. All right, guys, so we got all the pieces out here. I, I just wanna show you quickly how this thing will look. And it actually goes together, I mean, really, really quick. Uh, you know, I mean, really, I would've liked it if they would've had the, uh, where you didn't have to take this piece out, somehow it went around it, but I get it, right? You wanna make a solid piece. So essentially, I just wanna show you guys quickly how this thing goes together, as well as how it looks. So yeah, just take out the bolts like normal. I save the time, pop it out. Nothing new in there. And in essence, you just remove this front piece right here. This whole upper piece right here, right? With, I haven't, I haven't put any screws in yet, but this whole upper piece right here just goes in and replaces kind of right over that. I can't get it to sit in there, but it replaces, oh. It replaces that right there. So in essence, it's gonna look something like that. With this, again, I'm just roughly doing this for you guys. Now this piece will sit up here and sit down, and these pieces will sit back here. So, I mean, there's not a lot that you, you know that you need to change. I mean, in essence, essence, I can almost bolt this thing back and ready to go, but I'm gonna swap out the spring first and the spring is pretty straightforward. You have the two bolts, which will take it off the back. All right, so I figured probably some of you guys would have wanted to see this. I wasn't gonna show it, but essentially, if you wanna change the spring, I mean, it pretty much pulls right out. It's gonna look something like this, and it's a little bit different, but you are gonna have one, two, three, four bolts that you pop out, and then, of course, the little latch right here. And once all those are out, you can pretty much just pull this thing straight apart, right? And nothing too crazy here once this is out. I don't, want, I don't want all these pieces to go flying like that. Once all these pieces are out, of course, you just change the spring and put it back together. But I figured I'd show some of you guys just so you can see it. And when you put it back together, make sure you know the orientation of the top here because these little gears go on the gears here. So just keep that in mind. A lot of it, yeah, springs out like you can see, but it goes together, you know, fairly straightforward. My O-ring right here is really dry, so I'm gonna lube that up as well as inside the tube just to give it a little bit better of a suction. All right, guys, so there you go. I went ahead and swapped it on out again to save you some time. So we got the K26 in there, and of course, here was the stock one. Again, it's super simple. You got only four bolts, one, two, three, four. This whole thing pops up. Make sure you take a picture of the inside. A lot of things will pop out. There's a few springs down here and one up here where if it falls out, you're gonna have to go look it up on the internet. So just make sure you take a quick picture of it, but it's pretty much those pop out. You undo the spring, pop the new one in. And it typically, again, I don't usually do a K26 because it puts a lot of tension on the actual uh, dart blaster itself. So if this is gonna be too much, then I'm probably gonna go back because these little grooves up here are plastic. This little charge piece right here, 
This is plastic underneath here. And I feel like against these metal things and against this, I just don't want it to be too much for uh, for the blaster itself. So I'm still keeping a hold of my uh, original stock spring here. And I'm going to try this just to see how it goes. But I know this will make it shoot quite a bit heavier. So let's go ahead and lube this up, re-put in everything, and then we'll get working on the actual kit itself. Now, also while you're in here, if you guys, I mean, if you guys are already in here, there's a couple things you can do. If you wanted to do Teflon on the underneath this O-ring, you'll tend to notice this O-ring has a little, see how much gap that is? If you put a little bit of uh, Teflon underneath there, you'll get a better seal. I mean, that's not that great of a seal, but I, I don't know if I'm gonna put mine in there or not. I just probably wanna leave it stuck because this K26 is just a lot. And you might as well and go ahead and remove the little baffle here. You guys see that? So all that does is when a bullet is on it, it's gonna let all the air go around that. So you might as well just take this thing off. Some people I've seen actually, I mean, if I can get my thing in there. Some people I've seen actually will, um, they will like cut this whole thing out in the middle. So while you're here, you might as well take it out, get a little more FPS and do a little bit of Teflon underneath this. I might go ahead and do that really quick just to save myself some time and then we'll go from there. So you can see, I just went ahead and did it. You know what I said, yeah, I'm here, let's do it. I went ahead and put a few wraps of Teflon tape just around on the inside to give this thing a little bit better of a, a seal in that tube. Just again, so you can get a little more FPS. There we go. Now you can see that's sitting a little bit farther out. I'm gonna put a little more silicone on here just to, just to give it that good seal, right? That looks actually looks much better. Let's try it out in the tube here really quick. Oh yeah. Oh, that is... That is night and day, guys. That is night and day. I actually might take off just about a wrap to uh, get this in there, but that seal, oh man. Oh yeah, and the way to test it is put your hand over this and look at this. I mean, it's, it's suction cupping to my hand very, very well. So that is perfect. I might take one little wrap off. It might be a little too tight, but you figure if you're here and you have the spring, Fine, go ahead and throw it on. If not, guys, then just do do a little bit of Teflon around that, or some people will use like um, uh, electrical tape or something like that, and go ahead and remove the air restrictor from the top, right? That That's a gimme. If you want to remove the whole thing in there, but I say keep it, especially if you want to return it back to stock, I'm gonna remove a little bit here, but you could tell, look how, look how much better that fits on there. There's no more huge gap at the top. It's not sloppy in there. And there's definitely a better seal. You wanna get all that FPS out of there. So let's go ahead and undo that. Let's throw it back in the gun and let's go from there. All right, so getting kind of close here. So you're gonna to get to some point where it looks like this, where this piece is, again, in the front. I did confirm you can take out these two screws and these two, and you can just open that up enough to where it's not gonna break, pop out the orange kind of front normal piece, put this into place, and you're basically ready to go. So, uh, these two pieces just clamp on to each of the side to the cocking handle. This piece right here just goes right over your old Picatinny rail. This piece slides, of course, over the front. And then your rails are going to go something like this. And you can see on the back side here, they kind of have that curved piece. So you kind of know what goes where. So once it's all said and done, it should look very similar. I mean, not bad, right? So yeah, let me get this thing all bolted up uh, and then we'll take a look at it from, from a normal All right, guys, so we are back again. This install didn't take too long at all. I mean, there's a lot of shortcuts that you can do, but again, we kind of did the K26 spring update, update as well. And there you go, there's the final piece. Again, I did not get the butt plate, which is kind of crazy because it wasn't my order and I guess I should have done something because it's been sitting on my uh, kind of thing back here for a couple of months. So I don't know if I could tell them that uh, I'm still missing the bus plate, butt plate, but yeah, check it out. I mean, gosh, that looks, that looks awesome. Now I do have it cocked back. Um, again, it goes a little bit for, you know, uh, more forward, but yeah, the feel of it actually feels really good with the butt plate that I saw it went right on the back of this right here. And that would have been I mean, that's really what I wanted. I really wanted to be out here a little more when, you know, when I'm using this thing. And man, look at that. I think that looks, I mean, <laughs> visually it looks awesome. Now, would I get this again? Uh, the tricky thing is, you guys, this was expensive. This was about like 60 bucks when all was said and done. And it's, it's expensive. And when you think about it, there's just some guns out there on the market 
currently today some rival ones that beat the look of this thing. I mean, save an extra 20 and get yourself a Percy's, right? But I do, I do have to admit that, you know, this, it is unique. I don't see many of these when I go to the nerf battles. And I think it's great for um, a lot of the nerf leagues out there that say, hey, you can only have a, a mechanical gun. You can't have an electronic. So I think that's really cool because it's unique. The pump handle feels great. Now, when I'm looking at the 3D printed parts, they probably could have gone a little more granular. I do see kind of the lines, you know, where it goes. So I can understand the cost, where it comes from. It's the time of printing these things. But overall, the look and feel is really nice. The caulking mechanism, the build of the parts, very cool. But again, it's just the price that really got me because, you know, again, with, with some of the new rival stuff that's come out there, for sixty dollars do you want to just upgrade your apollo when the apollo already is like 20 25 bucks you're spending about a hundred dollars and you can get yourself a percy's but if your league or your nerf friends don't allow electronic you know and you want single shot perfect this is great we do have of course this up here which was the uh the jet Cita with the rt upgrade in it which shoots about 140 that thing is no joke so you know, when it comes down to mechanical single shot blasters in your league, I'm going to go, to be honest, with, with the Jet Cita. That thing is just an animal because shooting the small darts, they're just far more accurate than a ball, right? The balls tend to kind of whip up, whip down, and you can only go so hard. Um, when I was shooting this with the K20 sp K26 spring, I was getting like 130, almost 140 out of this thing. But the problem is, is with that much power, it's the ball just doesn't go where really you want it, right? You tend to have a little bit more of a spin that gives you an undesired effect. So I personally like the small darts, but I still think this thing looks cool. I'm gonna put it up here on my wall or maybe I might give it away in another giveaway, but this thing looks awesome. So 10 for looks, a three for price. Um, would I get it again? Uh, again, probably not, I'm gonna save up. So let me know what you guys think. Definitely subscribe if you guys haven't already. We do a lot of giveaways. Um, you know, we're probably having either one going or one very soon if there's currently not one going. Uh, yeah, definitely subscribe, guys, if you haven't already. <laughs> and thanks again, Fox fans.